Did you know you can make your images look more photorealistic with the press of a button? In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to do that using the D5 AI post-processing tool. So you can take a great looking image like this and turn it into a more photorealistic, beautiful image like this. So let's get started. So first thing you need to do in order to get into the AI post-processing tool is you need to export out a rendering. So hop over to photo mode and pick all your settings. And it's very important that you actually go over here to channels and you check mark AI post channel. This will actually let you edit vehicles a little bit easier and I'll explain why in just a little. Hit render and then once it bakes out, you're gonna click the AI post processing button right on the dialog window or you can go right up here. So I'm gonna click up here and I'm gonna show you how this works. So what I've got here, make this bigger, is a preview of the rendering that just came out. So I've got my people, I've got my rendering, looks pretty good, uh, but we've got a bunch of information all the way over here. So on the right, we've got details. This is really important because as you can see, I've got all these different takes or images or style transfers, and you can kind of forget, you know, which settings you use on each. So this will actually tell you, if you click one, what the settings were. So this is actually really handy. So look, I can say, okay, enhancement weight, this and that. So you've got that. Going down here, you have the typical AI enhancer. If I go here, I've got the option of enhancing the overall image. Um, this is the enhancement weight or enhancing just the textures. So this is actually new to 2.11 where they broke it out. So you can choose which parts get affected. I think the default settings are really good and I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. And for those that are kind of against like AI affecting the architecture, because you know, in the world of architecture, you don't want your form to change. And sometimes AI can change it ever so slightly. You can actually just select regions of your image to be revised. So you don't need to touch the architecture or the whole image. You do have that as an option, okay? So keep that in mind. Um, and a little pro tip, if you don't want the architecture selected, select it first and hold down control to add multiple views and then hit reverse and then it'll do everything else. You know, obviously spend more time on that masking, but that's my point there. So what this looks like with the AI enhancer, I'm gonna switch over to that. And I know it's the AI enhancer because when I click it, it tells me 0.7 and 0.4. So I'm gonna zoom in with my scroll wheel so you can see a little bit about what's going on. So some before and after. Now pay attention to the boulders and the water and you can see it just sharpens everything and makes things look a little bit more photorealistic. I find it really, really nice on vegetation. So look at like the flowers and everything. It adds a lot of life. In my opinion, it's like a no brainer um, to add this on. You could even lower the weights. You know, we, we could see here, we're getting like some weird things going on. It's because of like the reflections and everything. You could just lower the weights. That's the nice part about this. It's all customizable. So that's the, the basic, you know, vanilla version. In my opinion, I actually use the button right below all the time. This is the AI style transfer button. So when you click this, you're gonna get two different tabs. You can choose between a stylized transfer. So this is like voxel, scale model, marker drawing, pen sketch, pencil sketch, cartoon, and watercolor. So if you don't want something realistic and you wanna go more conceptual, you have the options here. And I'll show you what those look like in just a second. But you also have realistic takes. So you've got you know winter, autumn, spring, night, sunset, and reference. And these aren't new, You know these were introduced earlier, but the model has gotten better uh, with 2.11. My personal favorite method is to actually use style transfer from, from reference and not actually upload a reference image. And I just plug in these settings right here. I go with 0.1 or 0.2 of the style transfer weight and a structure matching weight of one. What I found is the model they're using for the reference images, whatever images it's trained on is gorgeous, phenomenal. And I'll show you exactly what that looks like. That is this version right here. And I just feel like it does an incredible job um, with the vegetation, the rocks, the architecture, like pay attention to the ivy here. Like all this looks really, really good. And here I went with 0.2, so that's why we're seeing a little bit of a change. And yeah, it's it's messing up the people here. Um, you typically see this when things are far apart, but look, texture wise here, that looks great. So I'm usually doing this 0 0.2, 0 0.1. Again, you have to see if it's affecting your image too much or not. But just overall, look at the leaves back here and just the overall lighting. So that's that's one thing I really like. And it does add some nice like weathering to your 
materials. Like, look at that. So one of the reasons I'm doing this, you know, same thing with the clouds. So these are the types of details I really like that it brings up. I can always go into Photoshop and like remove anything that's been, you know, modified that I don't like. That's definitely on the table. So for some of the other stylized views, let's run through them. Here, this is what a scale model looks like. So this looks like a, a diorama. This is like a, uh, this is a marker sketch. You can always confirm here. So this is a pen sketch. We can see here, pen sketch. And then I'm using the default weights here. This is like a colored marker, marker drawing. This is why I really like this details pane because it can tell me exactly that. Watercolor, I love. I think the style for this looks great. And it does a great job actually respecting everything. So this is great if you don't need something realistic and you need something conceptual. Then on the realistic side, you do have you know the other options. We've got like autumn here, which I think looks great. I love the lighting and the vegetation here. We have night, so one click night mode. This is cool, adds like a bunch of little like fireflies and everything, and it turns the interiors on, which I think is great. And then we've got a spring template here, which all, all looks great. So for just like one click to do this kind of like heavy lift, I think is, is great. So some of the other things I wanna talk about, if you don't wanna go this way, you could manually do this via in-painting. So in-painting lets you swap out specific areas without touching everything. If you wanna to touch everything, you can actually use Smart Retouch for that. Or if you wanna to touch one thing, you could use one of these templates. So you've got sky, water, vegetation, and you need to scroll down for character, okay? So let's just say I wanna change the sky. It knows what the sky is because I had that mask on before. Remember under channels, I checkmarked that. So it already did the masking. It knows segmenting wise what's what. So here, let's do clear sky, and then I'm gonna hit in paint and now it's gonna generate a new version where it's just revised the sky. And again, you could use this for different things. It just, it doesn't need to be just for the sky. It could be for vegetation. Um, one thing with the vegetation, while this loads, what you could do if you have a lower spec machine and your computer can't really handle scatter or all these assets, leave it plain and just use in painting to fill that in. And while this bakes, let's switch over and let's do an in painting of the grass just so you could see that. I'm just gonna select this area and I'm gonna hold down control. And I'm gonna do flower garden just so it sticks out and I'm gonna send that as well. And do know like you do have a queue here so you don't need to just do, you know, one at a time, like one and then wait for it. No, you can actually do, I think it's up to, I wanna say it's like around eight and then it'll tell you like, hey, you gotta wait for some things to, uh, to bake out. All right, so now our sky has baked out, so before and after. So like in one click, it revised the sky and it actually did a nice thing with the uh, the tree over here. Like it knew to edit that because that was part of the sky. But you can see, looks really great. That took one click. Um, so very, very powerful and it's very controlled, right? Like it's not changing the whole image, it's just changing that. So don't feel like you need to change everything. I can't stress this enough because I hear so many times that people are like, oh, you know, I don't like that, you know, my building gets edited or by any means, you know, use the end painting tool if you want it to be specific or use the masking tools. Like they're here for a reason. Like, like that's why we have this here. Okay. So stressing that because I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> it's it, they, they make it so easy so you can, you know, have full control over um, what's edited and what's not. And I think it's also good practice to not just like this is actually like general AI practice, not to just take what's taken out and then call it a day. It's okay to bring it into Photoshop, overlay it over the original uh, rendering, and then just, you know, composite out things that are working and not working. Like it can be a little collage, that's not an issue. And then this is our in-painting version. And, you know, I went with the uh, the very loud colors just so you could see. So this is what I mean, like, Let's say my computer couldn't handle all these like 3D meshes. I would just select that and there I go. I have it in post, which is actually really nice. So the next one I wanna talk about is the effect tab. So effect tab, this one's actually pretty cool. So there's a couple of post-production things you can do. And again, you can do specified content. You can either do the selection or a, uh, a drag, which is basically like a rectangle that you could choose like that. And anything, it's like a crossing window for those CAD users out there. Um, anything it touches, it will select. But anyways, you can sharpen it, you can denoise, and then you can also run a, um, a transparency filter. And this is actually what blends the AI image versus the base image. So if you don't want like 
the full 100% AI image, that's what this guy's for. So that's what transparency is. But most importantly, and why I like the effect tab, is for motion blur. Now watch this. If I were to click this car, and this is the reason why I baked out the channel, if I click this, tail lights appear. And when I click this, it's going to give me those long exposure streaks, and then I can increase the weight here, and that's going to make the car look like it's blurred. So this is really nice because that took no time. I don't need to go to Photoshop for this. And then I can save this. And a little pro tip, you could do a style transfer on your image and then you can go after and then do the post-processing of the motion blur on top of that. And I'll show that in another example, um, but very, very versatile. And then you can go and then save this out. So this was all done in the preview tab. And this is what's nice about how this is formatted. If you switch over to task now, it remembers, hey, you did this one rendering. These are all the options that came out of it. I can easily just download right here. And then I can see other options that I've done in the past. So this one, this is a little comparison of what it does with people. So this is the before default render. And then this is the, let's double check, my style transfer trick. And look at what it does with all the people and the vegetation and the materials. So you see how it just like enhanced everything and it looks so much more photo real and even added a nice wall there to block the horizon. Love that. But like the people look so much more realistic. So this is why you would use the post processor. You know, it takes the already, you know, good looking 3D assets, but it just makes them so much better. So no reason not to use this because you would never have like a 3D asset that looks like this. You'd wind up getting like a PNG from Photoshop and we all know how long and time consuming that could be. So let me show you some other examples. So at a recent webinar we did, um, this was actually a starting render. And then this is what we did with it with AI. So automatically it made the image look so much better and we managed to blur this person. So the method to blur this person is exactly what I was showing you with the car. All you do is you go over to effect, you do motion blur, and then you select your subject, who's the person here. So you select all the components and then you just boost the weight and then you get the blur. There you go. And if you have a really good eye, you'll notice that I did this on top of the AI enhanced image, right? So you can layer this, uh, which is nice. So we'll look at some other ones just to give you a little, little variety here. Here's another, and I'm just showing you these samples just so you could see like what could be done. And like the fact that I do use this a lot and I think everyone should, I mean, like, look, look at all the people and the textures and just, I mean, everything looks so much better. Like, why wouldn't you? And, you know, not to go on a little tangent here, but in the world of AI and, you know, AI coming for archivist jobs and all that, like, this is the only way I think we can, like, save ourselves some sanity, save some time to kind of, you know, I don't want to say, like, compete, but in a way, almost stay relevant. Like if renderings are being generated from scratch in like a couple seconds using AI, like we're not gonna be able to spend 30, 40 hours on like one image. We're gonna have to, you know, in a way, cut shortcuts or create a shortcut to make more renderings faster of higher quality. Cause like deadlines are shrinking, scope is increasing, quality expectations are raising. So it's like, this is the only way. Um, so like you can get your render 70, 80% of the way and then run it through AI and you've got a beautiful rendered image. You just got to make sure that the weights are balanced and things aren't changing too much. And it obviously respects the architecture. That's my disclaimer here. Like this does a really good job in general respecting it, but always double check AI's work. It's not hundred percent perfect, but anyways, you've got all this here. You can easily you know, download it all. You can even delete it. You can hit edit here and do like a, a batch download or delete, you know, you've got all these options. So overall, super powerful tool. You should be using it in your workflow. Um, in my opinion, I feel like this tool alone completely justifies like the D5 pro subscription because all the AI stuff is part of the pro tier. And actually, if you want to save some money, um, since I'm a certified instructor, you can get 5% off on any subscription, check the link in the description below. So you have that code, but like between like the assets and the AI tools, 
like that's why you go for the pro like that's my 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 take on this like the community plan is great but like the time saver that you get here with a post processor justifies the cost and that's just like one feature of pro if you have any questions about the ai post processor any workflow stuff you know leave a comment below i'll get back to you and as always like subscribe helps the channel out and see you in the next video